Hello everyone, mabuhay! You're about to watch Research Lecture Series. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel, hit the bell icon so that you will be notified with the upcoming series. You may also share the link to your students, classmates, or friends. Enjoy watching! This is a research spectrum that presents a snapshot of the entirety of this lecture series. In series 1 to 3, the first tier or level was presented particularly the meaning, nature, and classifications of research. Simple and scientific researches were contrasted as well as pure and applied research and cross and longitudinal researches. For series 4 to 6, the second tier, which is research method, shall be discussed. This series aims to present meaning and nature of qualitative research, purposes, sources of data, mode of data collection, and form and style of qualitative research. Qualitative research is a type of research in which data are presented in textual format. It is written in narrative or storytelling style containing the investigator's detailed discussions of A. Other people's views about a subject or issue or their accounts about a condition or phenomena obtained through interview or through written reports. B. Observer's field notes or video audio transcripts gathered in the field or in laboratory. C. Analysis of the content of written accounts, documents, speeches, literary works, and other compositions. And D. Interpretations of artworks, artifacts, and the performing arts. Qualitative method aims to answer questions about the what, how, or why of a phenomenon rather than how many or how much, which are answered by quantitative methods. A researcher, for instance, may adopt a qualitative study to shed light to a new phenomenon by describing what it's all about, how it occurred, and why it is happening by means of an interview to few eyewitnesses or by doing observations. Detailed descriptions of situations, events, people, interactions, observed behaviors, direct quotations from people about their experiences, attitudes, beliefs and thoughts, and excerpts of entire passages from documents, correspondence, records, and case histories. Miriam says that such kind of research is interested in understanding how people interpret their experiences, how they construct their worlds, and what meaning they attribute to their experiences. Zurabi opines that qualitative research report appears in narrative form and its organization is fairly flexible. Qualitative research is more appropriate in A. Presenting detailed accounts B. Exploring information or new or less investigated subjects and C. Developing new concepts and theories The different sources of data of qualitative research are individuals, artifacts, documents, speeches, events, conditions, and others. Unlike in quantitative research that require numerous individual samples, qualitative research can be conducted using limited samples. Creswell opined that it is typical in qualitative research to study a few individuals or a few cases, which may range from 1 to 40 because larger number of cases are unwieldy and may result to superficial perspectives. Upon the establishment of baseline data, a quantitative research can be undertaken to validate the variables identified in exploratory study. 
focus group discussions or FGD requires 6 to 12 people and the discussion takes to 60 to 90 minutes using various thematic questions and issues in a structured yet relatively informal manner. The employment of few samples in qualitative research makes the findings not conclusive, reliable, as well as not generalizable to the population. Hogan attested this, saying that qualitative data and methods are portrayed as exploratory, soft, and inconclusive. On the issues of reliability and generalizability of findings, May explained that the sample population should be a representation of other populations that the investigator plans to say something about. Soldania categorized the data sources as textual materials and visual materials that document human experiences and or oneself in social action or reflexive states. The former sources are from interview transcripts observation, anecdotal records or journals, field notes, and documents, while the latter consist of artifacts, photographs, video recordings, and internet sites. Further, textual materials can be classified as primary and secondary. Primary sources include legal and historical documents, observers' field notes or anecdotal records, eyewitness accounts, results of previous studies, statistical data, office records, creative writings, speeches, audio and video recordings, and art criticisms, while the secondary sources include books and articles which are available in the libraries, archives, and internet. Purposes of Qualitative Research To present detailed accounts on a subject that could hardly be done in a numerical format. Qualitative research methods are employed for subjects that require detailed discussion and cannot be exhibited in a numerical presentation. Historical accounts, for instance, are presented in a narrative or storytelling style. It is also more appropriate in describing a phenomenon, a relic or artifact, or in analyzing the content of a document, speech, or transcripts of an interview. Second, to explore information about new or less investigated subjects. This method is also adapted for exploratory studies with intent to provide baseline data for subjects that are unexplored. Additional information might also be needed for those subjects that have been investigated but with limited information. The purpose is to establish initial information about the subject, such as distinguishing features or characteristics, variables, dimensions, or indicators. Third, to develop new concepts, models, or theories. Yin explained that qualitative studies attempt to explain new concepts, social processes, or phenomena that are still vague at present. For instance, prior to the development of vaccine for coronavirus, an exploratory study of patients possessing the new deadly disease was first conducted. The research may be done through a case study of new patients possessing the same symptoms of fever, skin rashes, joint pains, headaches, and chest pains, among others. The common mode of data collection in qualitative research are interview, observation, immersion, document retrieval, and archival. The researcher of a qualitative research obtains data from participants or subjects through interview or focus group discussions. The questionnaire could be structured or semi-structured. 
an unstructured interview could be adapted for grounded theory type of research. Observation, on the other hand, is normally conducted in case studies and ethnographic researches. The researcher or a commissioned individual records his or her own observation using field notes or video audio equipment. Retrieval of documents are held in the libraries or archives where the data are stored. These data include written accounts, documents, speeches, literary works, and other compositions. Archival is conducted when the subject of the research are artworks, artifacts, fossils or relics, as well as the records of performing arts. The quality of the data collection process is of prime importance in a qualitative research. If the data gathering is not carefully administered, a less comprehensive information is obtained which limits the researcher to come up with detailed and rich discussion. It must be carefully designed so as not to affect the authenticity of information. For instance, the authentic behavior of grade 11 learners is best captured in an unobtrusive measure like case study in which the subjects do not know that they are being observed to eliminate mitigating factors such as social desirability or Hawthorne effect. Further, qualitative research design is provisional and researchers may modify or alter the design if it does not capture the data needed. Saldana says that since qualitative research design, fieldwork, and data collection most often provisional, emergent, and evolutionary processes, you reflect on and analyze the data as you gather them and proceed through the project. He further advised to change the pre-planned methods if they are not working to obtain the data needed. Pre-body considered qualitative methods speculative, provisional, useful as backups, supplements, and opportunities to give support to the real findings, generally the statistics, through more in-depth reflections. Qualitative research is textual in which the data are presented in narrative or storytelling form and the researcher's discussions are highly descriptive and thematic which are subjective, reflexive, and provisional. The discussion about the subject is highly descriptive, applying the multiple approaches such as explicatory, interpretive, instructive, illustrative, and clarificatory. These approaches can be integrated to come up with detailed, rich, and complex discussions which lead readers to see vivid picture of the subject feel the texture of objects or transport them to the place described in the study and the time when the episodes took place. As an example, the unobtrusive participant observation research that I conducted and published in 2018 runs as follows. The third segment of the ritual was truly terrifying that could disturb anyone with weak or unstable faith, the driving of the spirits. It started with a wine drinking ceremony. The attendant poured the bottle of gin in a jigger, almost fully filled, and handed it to the faith healer who drank its content effortlessly. Serving as the tanguero or wine glass filler, the attendant repeated the process and passed the miniature glass to the parents grandparents, and everyone in the room, including the researcher. As a first-time drinker of a local gin, the researcher had almost spurted the pungent, bitter liquid inside his mouth that was so abrasive for his taste buds. But for the sake of the ritual, he eventually swallowed the colorless, sharp-tasting alcoholic beverage until the last drop. After drinking, he had exhaled a couple of times, trying to pacify the reverberating nerves that were fully awakened as the warm alcohol 
runs through his throat down to the esophagus. In addition, the researcher's narrative discussion is subjective due to its reflexive nature. Hence, others find qualitative results less convincing. Flick says that this type of research is interested in analyzing the subjective meaning or the social production of issues, events, or practices by collecting non-standardized data and analyzing text and images rather than numbers and statistics. This characteristic further downplays the interpretive and subjective implications and suggestions that tend to make qualitative reports less convincing in the perception of outsiders, says Hebb. Qualitative research is reflexive in which the researcher's discussion is based from his or her own perspectives and not solely based from the point of view of the participants. The reflexive nature of qualitative research is subjective because the researchers are vulnerable to integrate their biases in the discussion of the subject. Saldana added that the researcher incorporates not just personal background experiences, but personal ways of living and one's inherent value, attitude, and belief systems. The narrative discussions are usually done in a thematic analysis. Hebb says that it is especially used to study commonalities. Example, common properties within a relatively small number of cases of which many aspects are taken into account. In the treatment of data, the responses are coded into teams or sub-teams, could be formulated if necessary, which are described in words. West expounds that quotes that are derived from the qualitative data can be used as questionnaire items. Quotes that are developed from the qualitative analysis can be turned into variables, and the themes can represent constructs or scales on the instrument. The interpretation of data is also based from their manifest or latent meanings. Saldana differentiated the two as follows. A manifest meaning is one that is surface and apparent. For example, describing a particular article of clothing as a long sleep jacket constructed out of thick black leather with silver colored zippers and snaps worn primarily for torso protection during motorcycle riding. A latent meaning is one that is suggestive connotative and subtextual. For example, that same black leather jacket symbolizing a member of a bike culture and when worn on a muscular, mesomorphic, brooded male of a hypermasculine outlaw or badass persona.
That ends our research lecture series for today. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, hit the bell icon, and share the link to your students, classmates, and friends. Thank you for watching.